are uh, activated. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind being recorded. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, hi everyone. So uh, today we have uh, Jackie Huang, who will be talking about uh, graphical CSS code transformation using ZX Calculus. Uh, Jackie, please take it away. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Jackie. Um, today we'll be talking about quantum error correcting code, and in particular the transformation between quantum error correcting code using, of course, the tool of ZX Calculus. Um, this work was actually done by Sarah, Leah, and me, with um, tens of helpful feedbacks from uh, our supervisors, Alex, Mikhail, and Michael. Um, to start, I'd like to first give you a quick overview of this talk so that you can have a brief idea of what you're gonna expect in the next 40 minutes. Um, in the study of quantum error correcting codes, there are just so many codes. For example, you have the square code, you have Steen, the quantum read Mueller, and you have many other um, five or eight or 10 cubic codes. Um, to make things worse, even for one particular code, you can have different representations. For example, for the Steen code, you can just write out all the stabilizers algebraically, or you can draw its geometry, which in this case is a triangle, or you can draw its telegraph, which um, originates from classical error correcting theory, or you can just draw the encoder as a quantum circuit. So now it seems that we are dealing with a giant table where you have in different columns, you have different codes and in different rows, you have different types of representations. Um, Actually, uh, I think different codes even have different preferred types of representations. For example, for topological codes, it prefers geo geometrical representations, but for LDPCs, it prefers telegraph representations. So this table really makes our argument uh, about like st systematic properties of quantum error codes very difficult. And in fact, um, we have realized this uh, problem. So the community have been trying hard to unify these different representations. And one very successful approach is, of course, the CS calculus. And of course, thanks to all the contribution of every one of us sitting in this meeting room. Um, for example, uh, using CS calculus, we can retain the properties of the previous representations, whether geometrical or in a quantum circuit form. And more importantly, the ZS calculus allows us to draw equality sign between the different representations. That means in this table, we have actually combined or merged the four different rows into just one. Well, of course, this is all done by our community. So in our work, what we actually did was to draw connections between the columns. For example, we actually show that the first three columns are related by something called co-morphing. And the uh, uh, last three columns are also related by co-morphing. And also the Steen code and the QRM code is related by something called gauge fixing. And in this talk, I'm going to show you all these relations using only one language, the ZS calculus. Okay, um, to proceed, I guess, I need to spend maybe the next 50 minutes to, talk to really set the ground. That is to define all the necessary notations and notions that I will use in the field of quantum error correction. So if you have never come across QEC before, you can maybe take it as a crash course on QEC. Um, the fundamental concept under QECs is the stabilizers, which are literally just a an abelian subgroup of the n qubit poly group. Then from the stabilizers, we will define something called a code space, which is a which is a collection of all n qubit quantum states that satisfy this equation. S per psi is equal to S to, to plus per psi for all S. And this equality literally is the reason why we call the group stabilizers. Okay. Um, the linear algebra actually gives us a very simple but useful uh, property about the dimension of these two sets. That is the dimension of S plus the log dimension of C is equal to N. Well, 
if you feel this is too, too abstract, let's to, let's see some examples. In the first example, I will have the stabilizers generated by ZZI and ZIZ. Then if you calculate it, you can find that the code space C is actually all quantum states of the form alpha triple zero plus beta triple one. Or you can say the span of triple zero and triple one. Apparently this set is just uh, isometric to the one qubit qubit space spanned by single zero and single one. Now return to the dimension relation here. The dimension of S, which is two, plus the log dimension of C, which is log two, which is one, two plus one equals three, which is exactly the number of qubits. Okay, next example. Here we have S generated by Z, Z, and X, X. Then again, if you calculate it, you find that there's only one quantum state satisfying the previous uh, constraint. That is the Bell state, actually. So since it, there's only one quantum state, so apparently this is iso, uh, isometric to the zero qubit, qubit space. Again, dimension. The dimension of S is two plus log two one, which is zero, two plus zero equals two. Again, the number of qubits. All right, next example. Now I have S generated by four Z's and four X. Now, if you still, again, calculate the, um, the, the code space is possible, of course, but very complicated, but very likely in practice, we seldom care about the exact expression of the code space, but we do care about the dimension, which you can calculate. Um, as you can see, the, the dimension will be two, and therefore we can just claim that the code space is equivalent or is um, isometric to a two qubit Hilbert space. Now, I hope you can see uh, why I mentioned this isometry so often, because actually every code space is is isometric to a lower dimensional Hilbert space. And therefore, we would like to characterize this isometry more explicitly. And we call this exactly the encoder, which is a map from a lower dimensional Hilbert space, say Q k dimensional Hilbert space, to the code space. In the circuit diagram, it will look like this. K is the number of input, and N is the number of outputs. All right, say um, we have a quantum state alpha on the left, then the corresponding state alpha, alpha bar will be what we call logical states. Now, um, let's say we have two quantum states, two uh, logical states in the K dimension, K qubit Hilbert space, and they're related by a unitary U. We first encode them into logical states, which be now become n qubit. And we wonder what should be the unitary U bar that relates alpha bar and beta bar. Well, apparently from this community diagram, you know U bar E must be equal to EU. In other words, U bar is equal to EU, E dagger. Uh, we call it such type of operators, logical operators, because they logically or effectively implement the U. Yeah. Um, as a special case, if U is a, uh, sorry, is a U is a poly, then the corresponding U bar will also be poly. So we call them logical polys. Now I can redefine the double bracket notation. Um, if you recall that K and N are the input and output dimensions of the encoder. But D, well, the definition is a bit weird, but it's the minimal Hamming weight of all the logical parties. Well, in some sense, D actually quantifies the sparseness of our code space in the large n qubit Hilbert space. In other words, um, the larger D is, the more um, tolerance or protection we have against errors. Um, as I said, if P, oh, sorry, if U is a poly, then the corresponding U bar will also be poly, but this is only a special case. In general, if U is just some uh, general K qubit unitary, then U bar will also just be some general N qubit unitary. So we don't usually know how to implement this U bar using the standard basis case set, 
that is the um C naught Hadamard uh phase gate T, etc. So what can we do now? Um let's return back to this equation. In the circuit diagram, it looks like this. And now we would like to turn to ZS diagram or ZS calculus for help. Um, the first thing we want to do is to rewrite E into encoders. Oh, sorry, E into ZX diagrams. And, and the recipe that I'm going to present only applies to a subcategory of state by the codes called CSS codes. These are basically codes that can be divided whose stabilizers can be divided into either X type or Z type. For example, in these examples that we just saw, they are CSS code because the, their stabilizers are Z type, Z type, Z type, X, Z type, X type. However, this code is not a CSS code because its stabilizer is a mixture of X and Z. All right, um, the universality of CSS calculus is every encoder should be able to be uh, written in ZX diagrams. But for CSS codes, there's a nicer property derived by Alex Kissinger that their encoders are phase free. That, uh, that allows us to uh, manipulate the diagram in a easier manner. Um, let's see how Alex's result is um, put into practice. Let's use the thin code as an example. To write the encoder of thin code into the X diagrams, we first write seven red spiders. Why seven? Because the thin code has seven physical qubits. Um, step one, we look at the first X type logical, or oh, sorry, lot the first X type stabilizer, which is X1357. So we draw a green spider connected to the first, third, fifth, and seventh red spider. You repeat the process for the second, third stabilizers, and also the logical operator. But for logical operator, you also add an input edge connecting to the green spider. That's it. And this is exactly the encoder for the thin code. Now, um, returning to our task, we wanted to derive U bar from U using the tool of ZS calculus. And we have just written E using the X calculus. So I would like to present the very first result, which allows us to derive D bar when given a ZX diagram B. The result looks like this. Um, if there is a red spider on the first input edge of the encoder, then it will be equal or equivalent to a green spider over here but connected to a layer of red spiders. Here, this layer is defined by the support of logical x1. For example, if x1 bars equals x1, x2, then I will have two red spiders on the first and second edge. Well, now you may think this result seems pretty weak because in practice, you can't have just have a simple diagram D over here. Well, that's true, but the power of ZS calculus is exactly that we can generalize simple diagrams to complex ones. For example, if you have a alpha spider now and it has multiple edges, then you can just perform a simple unfusion, leaving you just one phase-free spider on the horizontal edge. This way you can com you can use the previous uh, equation Actually, the more the most general result looks like this. The green spider, actually, the process is exactly the same, but you will not look at the support of logical X, but logical Z. That's the only difference. Okay, let's see how we can apply this lemma in practice. Um, in all the following examples, I will use the 42 code. The 42 code uh, has the following stabilizers. Um, oh, by the way, why 422, if you recall? 4 means the number of physical qubits. That's why we have 4x and 4z in the stabilizers. And why 2? 2 means the number of logical qubits. And that's why we have x1, x2, and z1, z2. How about the second 2? That means the uh, minimal distance, minimal 
high having weight of po logical polys. That's why we have x1, x2, x1, x3, and all these only have weight two. Okay, you apply um Alex Kissinger's rule to to the forty two code very easily. You can get this diagram. Now I would use this code and this encoder as our example. Um, the first example, let's look at a simple poly X on the uh, first input wire. To apply PTE, you first observe that X1 bar is defined by X1, X2, which means the support is on the first and second output edge. So uh, applying PTE, you get this. Now, uh, you may want to push the pi spider downwards, giving you this diagram. Now, this whole equation reads a single poly x on the first logical qubit can be implemented by two logical poly on the first and second physical qubit. Well, this statement actually just equals back, echoes back to the definition over here. Okay, next example. We have a diagram looks like this. Um, and we want to push this diagram from the right hand side to the left. To do that, we first perform an unfusion in order to match the required form of PDE. Then you, you apply PDE in the converse direction, give you this. Um, if you are familiar with the X diagram, you immediately notice that this is a measurement operator. In other words, this diagram effectively implements a single QB measurement on the first logical qubit. Okay, next example, let's see the T gate. The T gate is, has a green spider, so we will look at the support of Z instead of X. Applying PDE, you get this, and you may want to rewrite the diagram into this. Um, actually, this diagram is related to the state injection protocol, but it's just related, not exactly the same. The next example, let's try the Hadamard gate. Um, to push this, you first use all the decomposition to decompose one Hadamard into three X and Z spider. Then you push them one by one to get this. And then finally this. Um, if you are familiar with the, the face gadget, actually, you know, there's lots of things we can do with these diagrams. Okay, that's all the examples. Now, um, we are really, really able to show, to talk about the relations between codes. The first relation is called code morphing. In the literature, the procedure of code morphing looks like this. Given the parent code C parent with stabilizers S and physical qubits Q, you first choose a subset R of Q. Then you define a child code whose stabilizers are, are those supported only within R. Now you have two codes, the parent and the child. You look at their encoders and concatenate them in this special way. By doing that, you get a morph code. That's it. Um, that's all for the protocol, but it sounds quite very abstract, right? Because actually in this protocol, I used two representations. For the child code, I define the stabilizer explicitly. So I basically use the first representation. But for the second code, I define its encoder. So I use the, uh, the last representation. That's very inconsistent and inconvenient. So um, as we did, we're going to merge all these representations into one language, the ZX language. And we're going to rephrase the code morphing protocol using the ZX language. It looks like this. We start with an encoder E parent and a region R. The first step, you uh, look at all the green spiders whose legs span across the boundary of R. In this particular example, it will be this and this green spiders. So you unfuse them, give you this diagram. Step two, you add an identity red spider in between. That's it. Now, you can just interpret the first part as a child code and the bottom part as the morph code. See, the new protocol is much simplified. In summary, we just 
um morphed or decomposed the parent code into a child code and the morph code. And in this particular example, it was the stain code being morphed into a 42 code and 5.3 code. Well, actually, you can identify this is the 42 code because I have already shown you its encoder. Um, so the first advantage of using ZX Calculus is, to, is that it gives us a simplified protocol. But the second advantage is actually that we gain more flexibility. For example, um, we can actually use another region R, say uh, this region, then you apply the protocol again, this gives you a, a completely different decomposition. Um, and in this decomposition, you can say the Steam code now more, get morphed into a 611 code and a 431 code. Um, if you have some uh, knowledge about quantum error correction, you may quickly ask, how can we decompose a distant three code into two distant one codes? Or how can these two distant one codes ever be useful in practice? Well, we can actually think of this the other way around. Uh, in a sense, we actually combined or merged two distant one codes into one distant three codes. In other words, it's actually possible to merge or combine smaller distance code to larger distance code. But um, we are still trying to develop a more comprehensive theory of how and in what circumstances can this really happen. Okay, um, the next example, as we, as I promised in the very beginning, the QRM code can also be related to the a 2 code and 1012 code. The QRM actually has a structure of four polyhedra. So if you choose the green, oh sorry, the orange polyhedra as your blue region and you apply the morphing protocol, you get a A32 code plus a 1012 code. Okay, that's all for code morphing. So far so good. Now, um we are going to talk about the trans transformation between the Steen code and quantum Ray Miller code using gauge fixing. The Steen and quantum Ray Miller code actually has have very different co-parameters. So to bridge the, the connection between them, we're going to introduce a new code called extended Steen. Extended Steen actually just differs from Steen by a constant quantum state. So Whenever you get a extended steam, you can just drop the constant quantum state to get a steam. The extended steam code now have very similar um, co-parameters with QRM. So um, for the remaining of this talk, I will only talk about the conversion between extended steam and QRM. In the literature, the conversion looks like this. Apparently, this is too overwhelming. So we're going to re-talk, reinterpret it using this calculus. Um, to proceed, I have to introduce a new notion. I would like to generalize stabilizer codes to subsystem codes. Um, if you recall, stabilizer codes are defined by stabilizers, which are abelian poly subgroups. Now, the gauge group uh, are literally any subgroup of the NQB poly group. There's no requirement at all. And from the gauge group, you derive stabilizer group, but as the uh, commuting constituent inside the gauge group, in the Venn diagram, it looks like this. And the remaining part will be called LG, gauge operators. Well, it's a bit debatable whether one should use quotient or set minus here, but now for simplicity, I just use set minus. Um, now we just uh, generalize Steen code to Sorry, we just generalize stabilizer codes to subsystem codes. So, so we would like to also generalize Alex normal form from CSS codes to subsystem codes. Very likely, the result is quite similar with the only difference that we have the top part. We have some additional green spiders corresponding to the gauge operators, and we have an additional row state as an input to the green spiders. This row state can be understood as a subsystem inside the encoder. 
and therefore the name subsystem code. All right. Um, now I'd like to define a subsystem code whose gauge group will be the union of the stabilizers of extended steam and the stabilizers of QRN. In the VN diagram, it will be the union of these two circles. And by derivation, you can find that the stabilizer of this subsystem code will be the intersection. And the remaining part will be the gauge, gauge operators. All right, um, why I talk about this subsystem code? Because actually it sits in the middle between extended steam and QRM. Why is that? Um, if you set the subsystem row to plus, 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 then you actually recover extended steam from the subsystem code. Likewise, if you set row to be zero, 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 then you recover QRM from the subsystem code. Uh, maybe I can prove this equality for you. Uh, we, look, we start from the left-hand side. By definition, this is the encoder of the subsystem code. We first um, substitute this box by three red spiders using the definition of red spiders. Then you like to push the red spider rightward, giving you this, and finally this. Now, if you examine this, diagram carefully, you realize that this is nothing but the encoder of QRM. The proof for the another uh, equality is basically the same. Now, I, I am um, really, really able to talk about the transformation between QRM and extended steam. We start with QRM and the protocol says, we first perform three measurements which are the gauge operators L1X to L3X. By doing that, you obtain three binary outcomes, K1 to K3. Now for each binary outcome, if it is one, then you apply LIZ like this. Then the protocol says, after this, you just get the extended steam. Okay, of course, again, I will prove this equation using this calculus. Um, before I start, I would like to move these green spiders to the right-hand side. I would like to start from this equation. Um, from the left-hand side, I have the uh, encoder plus some measurement operators. Then you apply the definition of the encoder, give me this. Then you apply reverse PTE, if you recall, that will give you this. Then you push the k pi spider downwards, giving you this diagram. Now, this part is just a scalar, which we don't care. So we just throw it away. Then you would like to push the k-pi spider rightward, like this. And then finally, again, if you examine this diagram carefully, you realize that this is nothing but the encoder of the extended steam. Okay, that's it. So I have proof that the QRM code can be transformed into the extended steam code using the protocol. Okay, now I would like to conclude. Um, uh, before I talk about the conclusion, actually this is the QR code and the archive identifier for our paper. So if you're interested, you can use your mobile phone to scan this code while I talk about the conclusion. Okay, first um, we, we uh, put forward a lemma called pushing through the encoder. It, it allows us to uh, push anything basically any ZX diagram from one side of the encoder to the other side. But as we mentioned, the, the current procedure only applies to CSS codes. So it would be interesting to generalize this idea to non-CSS codes. Then we talked about code morphing. It allows us to decompose one code into two smaller codes. Next, uh, we had gauge fixing which allows us to transform between the thin code and um, quantum remuter code. But in the literature, actually, uh, it was noted that code deformation can be understood as a special case of gauge fixing. So it would be interesting if we could incorporate code deformation into our new interpretation. Okay, uh, before I really end and take any uh, take any questions, I would like to insert a short advertisement. This set of slides is actually typesetted with a new typesetting system called Types. Its, um, its syntax is as simple as Markdown. 
but its functionality is as rich as LaTeX. And most, most importantly, it compiles real fast. So if you're fed up with LaTeX like me, I do encourage you to check this out. Okay, that's it. Thank you, everyone. And I'm very happy to take any questions now. All right, so thank you very much, Jackie. <clears throat> yeah, so we have uh, plenty of time left. Um, so are there any questions in the audience? Okay, so um, I'll go first. Um, so there's pushing through the encoder. You can push anything through, but then usually it will end up connected to multiple qubits. So the operation you get is um, not going to be fault tolerant because it's going to sort of, um, it's going to distribute yes. the errors uh, to multiple Yes, places. in general, the, the resulting diagram will not be transversal. So uh, it's also one direction or for further study that how can we uh, systematically get transversal result instead of some random result. And then um, another question about so this um, uh, uh, I forgot the exact name, but code morphing. Well, like you you split mm -hmm. a code into two parts. Is that code morphing? That's right. That's right. Yeah. So then you get these distance one codes that combine to distance three code. Is that because these coaches happen to protect for di different errors? So together they protect against all errors. Like maybe one is good at protecting against Z errors, and the other is good against protecting against X errors. So if you combine them, they protect against all errors. Is that kind of how it mm, works? Yeah, yeah, that's that's possible. Actually, um, we we haven't examined this example very deeply, but um, but yes, that's very pos uh likely one interpretation. Um, because in this decomposition, I'm talking about the rightward direction. We actually unfuse this logical Cuban and this gets us some uh spider uh some some green or oh, sorry red spider that is not protected by X type stabilizer I believe and therefore the the blue part I believe is not protected by uh not it's not for for tolerant of X error but the purple part is so in some sense you're right okay. We combine. Oh yeah, and codes, yeah. I guess you introduce uh, new qubits as well, and those qubits might not be protected. So like uh, that's right. There's more. Yeah, it's, it's, it's right. it can be sort of trivially distance one because you have this dummy qubit you introduce. Yes, they're newly introduced and they are not protected by existing stabilizers. Yeah, yeah. So um, if I could I add a bit? Uh, mm -hmm, sure. Just um. Just um, this was an example where if we choose to unfuse one of the spiders, that's the logical qubit spider, like in this example, then it always gives you a distance one code because you have a, you have, um, um, you have something. Um, the the morphed code is always just gonna have a wait once, um, logical. So it just means that when you do the unfusion for code morphing, you don't want to unfuse a logical, like like in this way. Yes. Yes. The right word direction, um, this is a bad example, but so the left word direction becomes interesting. In other words, uh, we would like to think about in what circumstance can we delete unprotected qubits? And that will give us higher distance code. Yeah, I have plenty for the questions, but maybe in the audience, uh, if it's other people, then uh, um, we can go ahead. Yeah, so I'm um, I'm just wondering whether because uh, it's this kind of code morphing procedure where you can sort of make a code smaller and maybe preserve some of the properties the code has, some of the nice properties. So I'm wondering, uh, could you combine this somehow with um, like automated code searching? Like, oh, I found a code that's very nice, but I, I want to see if I can make it slightly smaller while preserving nice properties. So I'm mm. going to like, try to slice away some part of it. Mm. Oh, is, that, is that a sensible thing to try? Or is that, does, 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 does that not make sense? Definitely, definitely. It is um, really possible. Actually, in 
in this example, the original author, I think, uh, Michael, they noted that the, the stinkle has transversal T, and so do the resulting, the purple part also has transversal T. And this is in inherited from the parent. So it would be very sensible, very intuitive, very logical to, to try to think about how to um, reduce the size of the code while returning its full tolerant quality. But is that um, that that is something that you could already do, right? Like ZX doesn't um, really buy you anything extra. Of that it's just like more insightful what's happening. I guess. Uh, yes, yes, it offers more um uh, intuitive and graphical representation for us to 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 study the the uh, procedure. But yes, the the uh, um the inherence of, for example, T gate. The transversal T gate is already shown in the original paper without using ZS calculus. But we do believe that ZS calculus can give us more insight or maybe a more uh, general formalism of, of under what circumstances we can uh, retain these photon properties. Yeah, like, like um, have people looked at, for instance, uh, code morphing the surface code? Like, can you sort of slice surface code into two, or is that exactly what lattice surgery does? Uh, uh, not exactly, actually. Like, lattice surgery is uh, like a measurement-based protocol, but here we are just performing a cut between the edges of two spiders. So there are two different protocols. Right, like it, it sort of stays the same diagram. You just interpret like a part of it as a, a code on its own instead of uh, an operation that's actually acting on the, the, the code itself. Yeah. Hmm. And just as uh, Mike uh, pointed out in his paper that this is a newly developed procedure that they have not looked into its application in, on surface code. So they have only seen yeah. it on the CSS code like uh, oh, like, code is CSS codes. like service code CSS code, but not more general. Yeah, so I'm I'm wondering like because uh, like I I appreciate the difference between the the code morphing and lattice surgery, but like maybe it is kind of the same thing then. Like, uh, can you sort of feel like when you're doing the when you have two surface codes and you glue them together, this is kind of like having these like code morph things that are now made into a single thing. Um, mm, we we haven't consider the problem from this perspective, but it is indeed possible. In particular, in the process of code morphing, we just, well, all, all we did was just unfuse and then add and rest by the. Um, I'm not super sure how, how lattice surgery was done in CX. Is it in a similar way? So Alex has this in his paper. Um... I mean, you add additional measurements, and these, I think, sort of glue spiders together. It's like you have these two grids of the, the surface codes, and then you That's right. you put measurement qubits here, like extra stabilizers, and that connects them together, yes. and then it just continues the grid. So you add yes. additional stabilizers. That's like the thing to do. Mm -hmm. Mm, oh, oh! I realized one important difference between morphing and lattice surgery. That is, um, the decomposition result always look like this. You have one encoder compo compositioned with another encoder, composed with another encoder. They are just one after the other, but not parallel. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a composition. It's not a tensor yes. product. Yes. Yeah. But you could imagine like a more complicated scenario where um, if you do the code morphing that maybe the first part actually sort of falls apart into two pieces and it's actually like a tensor product code or something. Mm. Uh, I'm not super sure because in, in our current formalism, all we did is unfusion and add identity spider. So it doesn't break a diagram into two parts. But if we add more ZX rewrite rules inside, then it might be possible. But mm. maybe that will not be homomorphic at all. Maybe it's 
it becomes a new, more general protocol. Yeah. John, may I summarize your question as you're wondering um, if there is any connection between the cold morphing and ladder surgery or the cold morphing and the measurement-based protocol? Uh, yeah, because also I think uh, one of the papers you cited sort of in the bottom of your slide, I think one of the title contained this thing, like something with gauge fixing and ladder surgery, right? It, it was, although that's not cold morphing, that's like uh, that's gauge fixing. I should have it somewhere. This one? Yeah, that one, yeah. So I guess I guess that's kind of a different thing. That's like that's not asking is code deformation this is letter surgery an example of code deformation? I guess this paper is saying both code deformation and letter surgery are examples of gauge fixing, which is like a like a different thing. <laughs> yeah, in this paper they perform the measurement to rotate the surface code patches. And this is what is known as code information because they change the orientation or they reflect it. And like they are just like lat code deformation and lattice surgery are all carried out by the measurements on the surface code patches. Yeah, this is this is cool in any case. Um, if I can if I can sort of drag someone into this, uh, Teek, I uh, see you're in this uh, in this meeting, and I know you worked on uh, forecastization, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah. So I, I believe there was also some spider infusion happening to make that happen, right? Is this a kind of an example of like repeated code deformation maybe? Yeah, I mean, it's tricky because all of the uh, use cases here work in terms of encoders, but flow code codes don't really have encoders because they're, the sequence of measurements is, is, isn't just, yeah, the same thing every time. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, this was my question when I was reading the paper was, can I start to think of how I can apply these ideas to flow K codes, but I'm not sure yet. I don't know if a flow K code just has a bigger encoder that you can use. Um, but yeah, and what was your original question? Sorry, I went off on a tangent there. I mean, it's not really, not really a question. I guess like more like, um... They, they sort of super, superficially seem similar to me in the select calculus that they, they both have to do with essentially unfusing spiders um, and like reducing the weight mm. of certain stabilizers, I guess. Um, but yeah, I guess in this setting, you get just like you transform one CSS code into two CSS codes that are composed together. And for K code, you get like not even a stabilizer code because it's like a modifying. Oh, I guess it's kind of like stabilizer code, but like a, one that forms over time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it feels like a lot of the stuff that I think about and the way I see PsyQuantum and Google do it is they think in terms of what measurements do I actually perform to implement my code. And this is the ZX diagram that they care about. Whereas this paper and the other kind of school of thought seems to be like, what's the encoder for my code? And this is the ZX diagram I care about. And I don't know if mm -hmm. you can marry them up. More research is needed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Let me maybe ask a final question to to Jackie. Um. Mm -hmm. I think you 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 already mentioned a couple of sort of future research uh, questions. Are there, are there any things you're sort of working on now in this area? Uh, you mean by us or? By the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, I don't know if you, you and Sarah are still sort of uh, trying to think of new ways to uh, improve uh, paper to make things with it. Uh, well, for now, for one, of course, we are trying to generalize to non the codes. Uh, this is one important uh, generalization. And second, we we noticed that for the forty-two code, uh, let me pull out its definition first.
for for the two code, um, the this def this is just one possible definition where the logical x are just implemented by the physical x. But actually, it's possible to swap l two bar with z one bar, and this way you will have x two bar implemented by z type physical. And things get very interesting because now you lo no longer you're no longer able to write the normal form like this. You see the um the wire corresponding to the second logical qubit has z type support and therefore you cannot just connect it to the rest fibers like this. And so this is also one uh thing that we are trying to fix. Uh mm -hmm. Upon x is just normal form. So there is a polymer somewhere. Uh, yeah, that's possible. So we add Hadamard to the edges that uh supp that support or like that correspond to the swapped logical operator, and now it becomes like Hadamard edges, and and it it actually looks a little bit like the um, ZXCF proposed by Kasson and Shore. But yes. we still are missing some gap to show that oh like why, um like this like the the x um that the Hadamardid version of x z normal form is equivalent to the Hadamardid version of z x normal form. This is something that we have not yet proved, but this is this has been proved by Alex in his paper. So we're missing this part. That would probably also be a good stepping stone towards writing down uh, the rotated surf surface code, for instance, right? The what? Sorry. Which, yeah. uh, the rotated surface code, which also does not have pure set and x stabilizers, but like these mixed stabilizers. Um, although yeah, there, actually, I think that's, the... that's like we kind of feel that it's solved by um, uh, Zi Peng Wu, who gave the presentation a few weeks ago. So he did not really point it out like directly, but based on his rewrite rules, it's the same as like a uh, pushing a a, a poly from uh right to left or from left to right of the encoder so we are reading their paper to see if we could kind of understand like their technique and maybe to see whether that actually help us to find the stabilizer of, like normal form which paper is this uh it's the poem like they presented about like weeks their ago? concatenation co-concatenation mm. two weeks ago okay next see this and circling back to the morphing code, like their concatenation is actually closer to the cold morphing procedure than the measurement based protocol. Okay. Uh, thanks for uh, fielding all my all my question. Um, yeah, if there is uh, no uh, nothing else to be discussed, I think. Uh, can call to an early end. Um, Jackie, thank you very much again for your talk. Um, thank you.